right, guys, we're getting everything up and running here. So we are we are 7:30, getting everything up and going. So Facebook is on live or online. Instagram's online, and it looks like YouTube is coming online as well. Jay Colley, how you doing, bud? Jeremy Ansel, Benito, how we doing? Scott Anstein, hey, hey guys. One Source Outdoors from Instagram is with us. Justin, welcome. So, good evening, everybody. Nick Stevens, welcome. So, thanks for tuning in. Lori Hamrick from YouTube. Paul Bear, YouTube. John Tim, YouTube. Bugle me this, YouTube. Hello, hello. Looks like we have all three up and running. Kevin Walter made it. How's it going? I am doing good. How are you guys tonight? So, um, you know, lots of, it was a good shipment day. Definitely a, a good shipment day. So, uh, Neil over at uh, Archery Unlimited got me my uh, new bow today. It showed up. Um, the Option 4S site showed up rest of the components for the arrows so while i was waiting to come on and go live i actually uh sat down and uh built some arrows so i have a 3d shoot this weekend um i kind of thinking i might grab the new bow and maybe go set it in tomorrow night with the new arrows and go shoot the uh 3D shoot this weekend with that. So Larry Bennett, hello Jerry, hello. Phone's blowing up, Matt. It is that time. So, all right. So, um, Paul, I don't know how the new site is. I haven't even had a chance to uh, bolt it on yet. So, Justin, what's the word on that option site? So, um, for those of you that aren't familiar with the Option Archery 4S, it's, it's basically like two sites in one. It gives you basically fixed pins, but also gives you a single pin slider also. So I got the 4S, which is three fixed with one slider. So, and you can, you can take the fixed pins and pop them out of the way. So then you're only going with the slider. Uh, one Source Outdoors, the 3D shoot is here in Nampa, Idaho. It is, or Caldwell, Idaho. It's the Caldwell Indoor uh, two-day shoot. So, um, Jay, what bow are you shooting? You guys are just gonna have to tune into Friday night's video to find out. So Friday night is the first head-to-head -head bow battle. Uh, which is between the uh, Hoyt Carbon RX3 Ultra and the Matthews Traverse. So hmm, I guess you'll have to tune in Friday night to see. So started building arrows today, bought some Black Eagle Rampage. Matt Lux, what bow did you get? You guys are going to have to tune in Friday to find out. So another, uh, another cool thing about today. So uh, I received a few in just to make sure that our build was good. So we are hoping to get the tape cutter in in time so that way we can get the... Uh, smaller smaller tape size on those and have them available for the portland show and the salt lake so okay uh to do to do to do to do do you know of any indoor ranges near missoula nick stevens i do not so if any of you guys are in that missoula area if you want to comment and let nick know if there's any indoor ranges up there in missoula freddie how you doing bud lucas hope it's the matthews you guys are gonna have to just tune in so you got the new PSE, didn't you? Larry, no. Um, I haven't shot any of the new PSEs, and I'm actually going away from PSE this year. So, Okay, before we dive in also, bendable products. Um, you guys know their reed pouches and also their Express. These are the 2018 versions. They just switched to a new camo color. So all of their 2018 products that they have left are 50% off. So if you want a new reed pouch or you want that express, 
I suggest you get over to the Bendable Products website quickly and uh, order because once those are gone, they're gone. So Freddie waiting for my reads. Um, I will have a few with me in Portland, like I said, trying to uh, get everything all set so that we can uh, get them to dealer over there and have them at the Portland show. So, all right, let's get going. So good evening, everybody. My name is Michael Batiste. I'm from the Elk Calling Academy. Here at the Elk Calling Academy, we're all about helping you shorten that learning curve so that you find elk hunting success faster. If this is your first time joining us for Wapiti Wednesday Q&A, welcome. Uh, for those of you that are new, or if you enjoy the content that we're putting out, make sure that you like, subscribe, or follow, depending on which platform that you're on, because we do this every Wednesday night. And then on Fridays, we upload um, other videos where we do a lot of gear reviews and call reviews. So, And later on tonight, I have another announcement uh, along the lines of diving deeper into some of that stuff. So, okay. So just like always, um, we're going to start with a topic. And tonight we're going to talk about selecting a hunting partner. Uh, I know this is one of those things that if you, if you spend any time on forums or this or that, there's all kinds of people out there looking for hunting partners. It can be really, really hard to find a good, reliable hunting partner. And tonight I'm going to kind of give you hopefully some tips and tricks to kind of make sure that you are finding the right type of people to go out with. I know um, individual reached out to me last week after, and we kind of started talking about this subject and just kind of some horror stories about uh, what, what they've, what they've experienced. So um, is it the same material as 2018? Sean, I don't know yet. Justin, do you have any insight on the bendable thumb release holder? Thumb release holder. Mm, I don't know about that one. Mr. Jake, how you doing? Lee Cotton, present. Perpetual Wanderer. Uh, Rector Jody. Prometheus, welcome, welcome. Okay, so hunting partners. It's, it's one of those things that can be tough to really find um, because there's, there's a lot of factors in it and hunt darning is a good topic. I'm still trying to... <laughs> <laughs> still trying out guys after 10 years, still mostly going solo. See, that's that's the thing right there, trying to find. Because um, unfortunately, a lot of people take the stepbrothers approach. Yes, I'm going to steal it from the movie. Oh, you bow hunt? Great. Did we just become best friends? And then they go out and they hunt, and then you get out there, and you really find out that the individual that now you're out there in the woods with is nothing like you or the thoughts or beliefs or this or that it's it can be a rough time to find out when you're out there in the woods so hopefully going to give you some ideas and kind of some stuff tonight that will kind of help curve that and maybe make your selection so so really the one thing or, or you know there's a few things about uh, you know what makes a good hunting partner and worse than dating Paul, I agree. So, but a good hunting partner is going to have kind of the same mindset approach to to you. You know, what's what's your definition of a successful hunt? Because if you take somebody that is there enjoying the journey, and they're trying to hunt with somebody that their only definition of success is animals on the ground those two are going to mesh because, you know, they're going to be there on the hillside. They're going to have a great morning, you know, with bulls bugling around. And the one guy is going to go, man, what a great morning. You know, it was a you know, great sunset. We had these bulls. We were close. You know, that was a, a successful morning. And the other person is go, you, you're off your rocker. This was a horrible morning. We didn't fling any arrows. We didn't get anything on the ground. We didn't kill anything. And then that tension with each other starts and the bickering and the fighting and so i i do have to admit one of the services that we offer you know we have the one-on-one -on -one private lessons but we also offer something called couples therapy and it's not for husbands and wives it's not for me talking your wife into letting you hunt more or gals talking your husband into letting you hunt more that's not what the couples therapy is 
If you find that right partner and you spend enough time out in the woods together and you spend enough time together throughout the year, there is going to come a time that you are going to bicker and argue and fight just like an old married couple. So it's going to happen. That's why I called it couples therapy. So your, your definition of success is just one thing. You know, another fitness level is another I mean, you don't want one guy that maybe works out once or twice a week or maybe doesn't even start working out until 30 days before going out with somebody that is a ultra high endurance athlete. It's not going to be an enjoyable time for either of those guys. Um, You know, gear. How often do they shoot? How serious do they take this? You know, your levelness of seriousness and, and your approach. I mean, these are all things that you really need to find people that are on the same page. And unfortunately, when you start having discussions with people, the truthfulness sometimes is not always there with people. So, you know, they're going to um, maybe stretch the truth a little bit on their fitness level. Um but there's things that you can do. So it's almost like you are conducting a job interview with them. You're strategically asking them questions that doesn't sound like you're really grilling them to really find out the information. Paul, I like it. Try it before you buy it. I like Ron's approach. He's just looking for a hunting partner that's a good cook and has a strong will and back. So. So basically, (laughs) Larry, hey, Ron, how's it going? There you go, Ron. I think Larry's uh, saying he's a good cook and he has a strong back. So I think Ron's just looking for somebody to uh, do some cooking and packing for him, which isn't bad. So so there's, you know, there's the, the neat thing about today is there's a lot of opportunities to meet fellow hunters. You know, there's sport shows. Um, there's all kinds of events that you can go to and, you know, talk to people. And one of the biggest things that I hear from people is kind of, you know, in, in integrity and ethics. And, and one of the things that you can do when you're talking to some of these people is, you know, bring up, we, we always see news stories about poaching or this or that, bring one of those stories up. Go, man, hey, did you hear about, you know, this story in such and such place where they did this? If that person looks at you and goes, yeah, I'm sure those game wardens are just out to fill their quota and they're just, that's going to give you a great indication that that may not be a person that you really want to be out there with. Um, you know, you can, you can really just a, a simple question like that. You can uncover really their ethics in a hurry. Um, you know, just based on how they respond to, you know, some of these stories, try to find somebody too, that's pretty close to, you know, your age. So, um, you know, you start getting somebody, 10 years or more other than family. If it's family, that is something completely different. But, you know, there's going to be times on the hillside where you're going to want to have a conversation. And if, if you're hunting some with somebody that's, you know, 20 years between, you know, the age gap, um, there's different times, you know, different ways of, of being raised. And, And there's going to be some struggles on some of these. You know, also, too, what's your sense of humor like? Do you have a dry sense of humor? Do you like running, you know, jokes and gags? You know, if you guys take a break, do you maybe pick up a rock and throw it in your hunting partner's pack just to mess with him so he's packing, you know, a great big rock or something? So these are all things that need to kind of be talked about but like I said you know so much now is 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 just oh you bow hunt yeah I do too great let's go and and you don't uncover any more information so you know you also have social media go to their social media pages see what they're posting is what they're posting kind of along the lines 
of how you post or your beliefs or, you know, this or that. So, I mean, these are all things that you can find out long before you even have the discussion of going hunting together. You know, if you guys are close by, go take a camping trip together. Go for a weekend, go camping, do some hiking. Maybe maybe if bivy hunting is your style, go for a bivy, bivy camp weekend. You know, throw camp on your back, get together, go hike, you know, five, six miles back in and and see how they behave. See how they see how they do. Cause the last thing you want to do again is if that's your style of hunting and all of a sudden, you know, you're talking to someone, great, you're going. You got camp on your back and you guys are 10 miles in on a 10 day long hunt. And, you know, halfway through night one, that, that person's curled up in the fetal position, rocking back and forth, talking to themselves. You're not going to have a good, enjoyable time for the other nine days. Okay. Uh, let's see. We got a lot of comments rolling in. Uh, to, 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 as much as I hate to say it, but I found a great hunting partner with my boss. Hey, you can find them. Actually, you know, Bryce and Brandon, um, you know, I've hunted with those guys, God, for a long, long time. Um, we just, we, we mesh well together. We have the same type of sense of humor. We have the same approach. Um, you know, we, we enjoy others in the group. You know, you know, we celebrate their successes just as much as we, you know, celebrate our own. So Paul need a dating board with biography. Um, I got something that kind of working on, it's not a dating board, but there's something I've been milling around in my head for a little bit. So, uh, Lucas been grooming my current partner for the last five years. He's finally keeping up to me. Now my daughter is legal age to hunt this year. So I'm going to have to dial it back. Someone out with her. So need a match service for hunting partners. How young will you do couples therapy? My son is 12. Um, Larry, that's that's fine. If that's who you hunt with, that's your hunting partner. We can do couples therapy. Absolutely. There's there's no age restriction on that. So Gene Briggs, excellent topic. So, um, okay, I have yet to find a great hunt partner. It's tough, like you said, to mesh with the right person. And, and, and here's the thing, too, that, that I think some people are just so headstrong or so deep in their beliefs that they're looking for that perfect person that has 100%, you know, the same beliefs. But you're going to have to give and take a little bit to really find that, that perfect mesh. So, and... I'll tell you this, if, if, if you're a brand A camo guy and they're a brand B camo guy and you refuse to hunt with them because they wear brand B, you know what? Drop your ego at the stinking door and who gives a crap? So this whole brand baby click stuff is absolutely ridiculous. So, um, I mean, really, you, you're you both there to enjoy an opportunity that, that we get to go out and enjoy nature and chase. And this is not just with elk hunting. This is any hunting. Um, and, and in fact, prime example, that antelope tag that I drew this year. Um, you know, Bryce, Bryce called me. He's like, hey, what are you doing tomorrow? And I said, well, I have this antelope tag. I'm going to run up and blah, blah, blah. And he goes, oh, I've never been antelope hunting. Do you want to go? Well, heck yeah. He got up at 4 o'clock in the morning just to go with me. He didn't even have a tag. He just wanted to go and experience it and see it and see what it was like and, and all that. That's one thing that's cool, and, and that's one thing that's kind of rare to find because – you know, a lot of people today are me, me, me. It's all about what's going to happen for me. And if I don't benefit from it, I'm not going to go do this. And I'm not going to go help you if I don't benefit. There's no wonder that those type of people have a hard time finding people to hunt with. And I'm not saying 
any of you on here, any of you commenting, I'm not saying that's how you are. So, but really, honestly, you need to sit down and really think about a few of your beliefs and ideas and approaches. And, you know, what are you looking for in a hunting partner? And, and honestly, guys, sometimes the opposites are sometimes a, a good recipe. And what I mean by that is um, certain, certain aspects. So, um, you know, maybe one of you can, can cow call really, really well, but the other one is, is really strong on bugling. The cool thing about that is the two of you helping each other can strengthen both of your weaknesses and make both of you a really, really good pair. So sometimes finding that strength and weaknesses counterbalance can really work well as two. Now, a few things that you do not want to skimp on, and I mentioned them, is fitness, ethics, uh, definition of success. Those are a few key things right there that you need to be on the same page about. But some of the smaller stuff, it's okay. You can let it slide a little bit. So, um, and don't be afraid to kind of, you know, communicate. So, um, let's see. <laughs> uh, looking for a hunting partner second year in a row. Larry, I've got horses for that. Okay. Uh, I hunt with Larry as cooking stinks. <laughs> But he has pack horses. See, I like it. I like it. So there's some there's some good sense of humor in here. And that's part of it. I mean, you got to have fun out there, guys. So I want to find someone or persons that want to hunt the backcountry. I had one and he moved to Arizona. So see, that's that's one of the things right there. So, okay. So David Crane, he lives in Western Washington. He's a backcountry hunter that is looking for a partner. So if there's any of you that you don't necessarily have to live in Western Washington, but if you hunt Western Washington, you guys can get together and talk. So Idaho Elk Slayer, any 50 year old fat guys like me, I'm 49, but I've got a group that I've been hunting with for a few years. So uh, find someone new to hunting and teach them. See, now Scott, that is a great comment. The only thing is though, not everybody can teach. Not everybody has the patience for it. A lot of people think that they do, and they're like, oh yeah, not a problem, come with me, I'll teach you. But as soon as it gets out there and they really have to start explaining things or really you know, take that new person by the hand, it really, really gets frustrating. And some people really just start getting on edge. It starts eating at their nerves. So if you are somebody that can teach, by all means, take somebody new. So we've all seen the new article, news articles that, you know, the baby boomers are starting to phase out of hunting. So our hunting numbers are actually declining because they are phasing out faster than we have new people coming in. So that is a great opportunity. But again, you need to teach them the right way. So... Luckily, my hunting partner is my brother. Grew up together and have the same mentality. We bicker at times, but when it, come, when it comes down to it, we both have the same goals and want the same end result. Benito, you guys bickering, that is family. It happens. So, it, uh, but the cool thing about family is you may bicker, but an hour later, you guys are right there and you have each other's backs. So, uh, Nick Stevens, day scouting or shed hunting is a great preseason test. It, it is, and, and, and here's why. So these day scouting, and, and, and really not so much scouting, because when you go scouting, you typically go into an area that you hunt. You're not even sure if this is a person that you want to hunt with. Well, now you just took them into a place that you wanted to scout. Shed hunting, good idea, because usually that's winter range is where they're dropping. Um, same thing with, you know, like, like the weekend camping trips that I talked about. You could just pick some trail that's not even remotely close to your hunting area. 
and go use that as, as a test weekend. Shane, anyone from Boise, Idaho? Shane, we actually have quite a few people on here um, that are from the Valley. So uh, Boise, Nampa, Caldwell, there's a lot of us that are um, in here. So uh, Jack, hello, hello. Glenn, 8020 works. About time you got here. I like it. Benito, I'm in Western Washington too. Okay, back home in Dash Point, late as usual, and found my buddy on a public Facebook hunting page during the rant post I made. Since then, Dave West and I are like peas and carrots. Would give peas and carrots. I'm sorry, I just had Forrest Gump's voice just pop into my head about him and Jenny being like peas and carrots. So, <laughs> sorry, guys. Okay, kind of getting off track here a little bit. So... Um, but you guys, you know, a lot of you are having, you know, the right idea, the, the, the right approach. Use this time to, um, you know, kind of interview a little bit. Uh, Ty Toyn, when is your call getting released? Very soon. We are hoping to have them available next month for the Portland show and the Hunt Expo. The one thing that we're we're waiting on. So uh, Mark sent me about six of them just to test and make sure that, yeah, we do have, you know, the right stack on the latex, the right stretch. Um, the one thing that we're waiting for is the smaller tape cutter because we are going to release these in a smaller tape cut. So for those of you that have tried any of the native by Carlton's in the past in the Rip It line, you know there's quite a bit of tape. Um, the new read is, is actually, um, well, the tape's going to be about the same size as your Phelps or Rocky Mountain hunting calls or any of those, um, basically kind of industry standard size. So, so we're just waiting for that, that cutter. So bugle me this. I only hunt with guys or girls who spend three months salary on Kuyu or Sitka. So, you know, that's one of those uh, brand babies right there that, uh, never mind, I'm going to hold that statement because I know you're actually just joking. So, all right, my, bro my brother Mike is the best hunting partner. He knows what I'm thinking and I know what he's thinking about without talking. That's one of those bonds right there that when you find the right person and you click, you guys will have that type of mentality that you don't really have to communicate a lot when you're setting up because you both have that similar approach. You have that similar hunting style. Um, that's, that's another thing talking about hunting style. You know, do you prefer to call? Do you prefer to spot and stock? Do you prefer to tree stand? You know, these are all things to have these, these conversations and discussions ahead of time. So David Crane, Paul Bayer from YouTube is saying, look me up. I think you guys are on in the same area. So uh, to, 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 I wish I could find a hunting partner that is willing to learn how to call. That is one of those things that, and, and here's, here's the hard part with, with calling. So you have to be kind of open to criticism and you have to be open and willingness. Um, I mean, yeah, there are fun roundabout ways that you can do it, but really absolutely. If your guys's approach is calling, then both of you need to have that ability to call. And, and, and really in my group, there's five of us, there's, there's five of us that hunt together and we normally break up in one group of three and one group of two. Um, but everybody knows how to call and, and, and everybody knows the biology. And it's not just calling, but it's understanding behavior. If you are a steward and you are doing all this homework, but the person that you're hunting with is not willing to do that, that's fine as long as they're willing to listen to what you're saying. You know, if you're sharing the information with them in a roundabout way, they're still studying. They're still, uh, you know, growing with their elk hunting knowledge and, and, and their calling ability. It's just a little bit 
different. So meaning, you know, you really took the time to dive into this, but now you're helping them. And if you have, if, if you're hunting with somebody that has more experience than you, has more success than you, again, check the attitude and the pride at the door. Be open and be willing to learn. But again, this goes back to the ability to teach. If, if you know, there's the right way to teach and the wrong way. And, you know, the right way to bring something up with somebody in the wrong way. Know the difference. And how you kind of present that information or how you talk to your partner about some of that stuff is going to make all the difference in the world is if they are open to receiving what you're saying or if they're immediately guarded off. So that is... Um, you know, one of those things that can immediately take a hunting partnership and just start it spiraling down because then the resentment and the attitudes in this and that start, and that's just not a good way to go. Then it trickles over with everybody else. So, uh, Glenn, 58 and like to cook. You know what? I like a bunch of the comments that are coming in tonight because it's almost like you guys are just... Uh, filling out a profile on 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 match.com so in fact jack just put uh should start a website huntingpartners.com so um there's something i'm working on guys so just give me a give me a week or two so uh okay idaho elk slayer i call pretty good need some motivation in the fitness area okay so that's a great example right there of where I was talking about the opposite. So Idaho Elk Slayer, you know, you're confident and you feel that you're good in calling, but fitness is where you need motivation. So maybe you find a hunting partner that you guys have the same beliefs and ethics. You have the same belief in success. You have this. So, but maybe... They're pretty good on fitness, but not so good on calling. Now, the two of you, that's that strength and weaknesses that can work together because you can work with that individual on their calling and they can work with you on your fitness. But then the nice thing is, is the two of you hold each other accountable. Okay, you hold them accountable in the area of practicing their calling. They hold you accountable in getting your butt in shape for season. So... Elk Strong Cisco, finding a good hunting partner is one of the hardest things. I feel your pain on that topic. I have been truly, you know, blessed with, you know, some of the people that I've hunted with over, you know, my hunting career. Um, you know, like I said, Bryce and Brandon are two of the ones that I have probably hunted with the most and the longest. So, and just works really well together so uh scott schmidt is a good teacher he taught me a lot so good 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 teaching can be very re rewarding or absolutely frustrating bingo so it can be frustrating in if the person that you're trying to teach is not open to being taught so, and again, I think that kind of goes in with your approach and how you kind of handle it and bring it up. So I get frustrated trying to teach. I wish was more patient for that. It's one of those things that is tough. Um, it, it, it absolutely is tough. Some people, it just, it comes really, really easy. Um, you know, some of you guys are students of the Elk Calling Academy. Some of you have done one-on-one -on -one lessons with me. Um, you know that I use a lot of sarcasm and fun in, in, in teaching, which hopefully, you know, makes it fun for you guys instead of just, you know, putting in the earplugs and going, wow. So, um, but that's kind of how you present it. So, uh, last stand outdoors. Yep, it's always beneficial to hunt with someone more motivated and gung ho than you. If not, it's hard to get out for many people. I I agree to an extent because if you really have, if the two ends of that spectrum are too far apart, 
it's really going to cause a lot of clashing. If you know the the, the gung ho and, and 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 I mean if they're if they're kind of closer together, um, yeah, you can benefit and you can help each other. Because yeah, when you know you're out there for you know a long period of time. I remember I remember one year uh, when I was with Rocky. Uh, you know we hunted elk for six weeks straight. We hunted multiple states. And when we were going into it, we were like, oh my gosh, this is going to be awesome. Six straight weeks of elk hunting. Man, by the time the fifth week rolled around and you've been at it every day, hitting those hills, plus jumping in the rig and driving to the other state, and that alarm goes off on week five, it's tough. It is really, really tough. And that's where, you know, kind of having somebody you know, motivated because you're going to have days where maybe you're a little more motivated than your hunting partner, but holding each other accountable and lighting the fire and getting going, that's what makes a good partnership. If it happens to be a day where both of you are unmotivated, huh, camp morning, you know, do a camp morning, clean camp up, kind of get recharged and, and you need those days sometimes. So Paul, Elk Calling Academy should have a mixer bow, sh bow shoot party to meet and greet. You never know what is going to come in the future. So, last stand outdoors, ha ha ha, day five, it's tough. Yeah, it can be, especially if you're getting your tail kicked in. You know, you're not not hearing elk, not seeing elk, you're covering all kinds of miles and, and you know, you're not even finding animals. Your motivation can really, really go away quick. But I think that's one of those things where if you focus on the whole journey, you have an easier time with it. If you don't just focus on, you know, a punch tag as a success of the hunt, but you focus on everything else, I think it does help kind of motivate you a little bit better because, you know, when you've when you've done this, especially for a lot of you guys that are new, once you start doing this for a little while and you start kind of enjoying, you know, some success, you know that in a matter of an hour, your whole hunt can turn around. It can be your worst hunt of your life. And then all of a sudden something turn around and it can turn into the best hunt you've ever had. So, but it's all in your perception. It's all in you know, your mindset going into it and, and whatnot. So, uh, maybe this summer. So it seems like every young guy wants to archery hunt and video it nowadays, you know, okay, let's just talk about that. Yes. The popularity of video is growing. Um, like I, you know, for those of you that don't know, I've, I've worked worked in the industry for 15 years. Um, and in fact, the uh, Rocky Mountain hunting calls or bugling bull game calls, their video series, if you own those or watch those, you will see me in a lot of those. A lot of those you won't because I was the guy behind the camera, packing the camera day after day after day. Videoing a hunt and having a video camera adds a whole other dimension into elk hunting. And a lot of people have this misconception that if they go out with a, with a video camera and they film some hunts, that they're going to become famous and rich. That's not how it works. I know they see people on TV, but what they don't realize is the amount of money that those people are paying to be on TV. Now, yes, with YouTube and this and that, um, you know, you don't have to pay to broadcast what you're what you're videoing, but there is it's it's a whole other dimension, and that's definitely a, a you know a topic that you know you need to have with you know potential hunting partners when again talking about you know what you're wanting to get out of the hunts and what you're actually wanting to do so. Uh, Jerry, anyone from Western Pennsylvania? So if there's anybody from Pennsylvania, uh, Jerry Keys, K-E-A-S, uh, from YouTube, um, is looking for people out on that side of the U.S. So that sounded bad, Jerry, that side of the U.S. 
from Western Pennsylvania. So, all right. Shane, I'm from Boise. Let's get together, whoever, and smoke us a bull in September. Nicholas Curry, I hunt with younger guys. I am going to be 71 this year. We hunt the backcountry and have a lot of fun. We are going to hunt Idaho this year for the first time. Can't wait. Nicholas, good for you. So, um, you know, that's kind of, you know, like-minded. So, um, 49 getting into shape could use an Oregon partner. Okay, Scott, um, you know, looking to do some spike camp hunting, haven't killed an elk yet. Okay, so for some of you guys too, um, you know, next month I'm going to be in Portland for the Portland show and then also Salt Lake for the Hunt Expo. So definitely come by and, um, you know, we can use that as some mingling time to kind of meet each other and I don't know, maybe I can be the matchmaker with some of you guys. I don't, I don't know. So, um, okay. So real quick guys, um, there's two giveaways going on right now. Kong Valley Collective is right in the middle of their 31 days of giveaway. So if you're on Instagram, make sure that you get over to Kong Valley Collective, follow them and get entered in their giveaways. Another one just started, Good Bull Outdoors. He's a photographer that is highly talented. He's right on the cusp of hitting 20,000 followers. He has a couple of packages that he's given away. One's a $1,500 value, the other's a $900 value. So get over to Instagram, follow Good Bull Outdoors and make sure that you get entered. Now I did share the giveaway on my page and some people have been commenting you have to comment on the good bull outdoors page so just know that if i shared those from kong valley or good bull outdoors you have to do what's being asked on their page to be entered it doesn't count if you do it on my page so uh, okay ron i'll be at the show portman portland show jay yeah someone owes me a call because she cut it so, uh, Scott, I can only teach what's been taught to me and that's it. You're actually just passing on things that, uh, you learned. So, uh, Eric Hernandez, we're in Oregon. So Scott, when you mentioned about Oregon, here is Eric Hernandez also on Facebook saying where at. So, uh, anyone hunting unit 22? Bear, Idaho. So, okay. Um, one other thing that kind of want to talk about, or, or a couple other things here. For the Portland show in the Salt Lake, I will have the Elk Calling Academy shirts and hats with me. The hats just arrived in Boise today, hoping to have those um, on the Facebook store Friday. But I will have shirts and hats with me at both Portland and Salt Lake. So, Something else that a few of you have been asking, like last week we talked about, you know, FOC and, and building a hunting arrow. And I got a lot of messages from people about wanting to dive deeper and wanting, you know, more information. So I have created a Patreon page, P P A T R E O N. There are patron levels that you can jump into and there's three different levels. There's different benefits at each different level. It does have a monthly price tag. I, I think it's $8, $10 or $15 a month, but you get, a, there's a few advantages. And like I said, you can see the different tiers with, with some of the different benefits, but some of the things are, is, for patrons, there's videos that dive deeper into some of these subjects and also diving deeper into some of the calling tactics and practices that I talk about. Also, a lot of this gear that I'm doing head-to-head -head testing on, um, I'm going to start doing giveaways to those patrons um, because... 
I'm spending my own money to get this gear in to test it. And I just figured, you know what, if we have people that are supporting us, helping us get more products into test and do reviews on, why not give it back to you guys? Why not, you know, give those? One of the things I know that you guys have seen a few of the posts lately where, you know, first it was both, or, or you know, Hoyt versus Matthews, uh, the one I posted here recently was Botec versus Prime. Um, I have a couple of others, you know, coming up, Botec Realm SS versus a Matthews Verdict. I really want to give back to those that really, really support this page. So once I reach 400 patrons on that Patreon page, I am going to draw one random winner and that random winner will get to choose the bow of their choice and I will send you a brand new bow. So there we go. If you guys are interested. So this is just for, you know, those that really want to dive deeper, really want more information and really want to step up because I know we do offer the one-on-ones. Some people don't have the time or don't feel comfortable with the one-on-ones. So this is just another way that we thought to really help expand that learning. So um, I will put links on the different pages. So um, it'll be later tonight that the links will be up there. So all right, uh, two, 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 two. let's see. Is there a funny hunting story with a partner? I have a bunch of them. And in fact, that's one of the things that my wife talked to me about the other day. Because like I said, I have been involved with videoing hunts for a while. And these reviews, she asked me if I had ever thought about releasing kind of a gag video just where spoofs you know funny things that have happened when the camera's been rolling um i i mean i have video of somebody that used to be a very large name figure in the hunting industry that is deathly afraid of snakes and we would do different things like we had a, a uh, rubber fake snake that this individual just loved sheds. So we would plant sheds where we hunt, but it had fishing line that was tied to this rubber snake. So, you know, and we would, you know, walk on paths so that he could see the shed. Well, we knew he was going to go over and pick it up. Well, he would go over there and yank that shed up. And then all of a sudden, here comes this snake coming out of the grass. And he would be running back down the trail, shrieking. So like a, like a little young girl. Other times, we've taken that snake and tied it to the door so that he opened up the door. And the snake came fly, flying out from him. But I think one of the good ones that we did one time, we were filming. And we were doing an episode on scent control and the importance of scent control and playing the wind and this and that. Well, the, the one thing that we did was we put a remote control fart machine in the individual's pack. They had no clue that it was in there. And everybody was in on this gag except for this one individual. So we get the camera rolling and talking about the importance of, you know, scent control and, and scent products and, and right in the middle of this very serious talk about scent control, uh, you know, we pushed the button on that fart machine. And it was not a silent little sound coming out of that fart machine. But the pure terror on the individual's face was just priceless. So because this individual was new to the hunting industry and was really, really trying to make a name for themselves and really wanted to grow. And, and, and basically, it was, it, it's one of those things that around us that if you start taking things too seriously, we are going to do something like this to kind of knock that edge off. So because, you know, one of my favorite quotes, guys, is don't take life too seriously. Nobody gets out alive. So have fun. So... 
Uh, let's see. Sounds reasonable. A lot of 2A people use Patreon. It's a good outlet for monetizing your business. So, yeah, and that's all part of it is, is you know, we want to grow. We want to bring you more content. I, I mean, there's a ton of products that we want to do head-to-head -head battles on and we want to test and give you honest feedback and help you learn. But like I said, a lot of this stuff, you know, same thing with hats. Um, I know we brought in... Um, you know, just snapback hats, but there's people that are asking for flex fit right now on the shirt and hat that I brought in right now, it's $25, $2,600. So, I mean, that's money I'm taking out of my pocket. So I would love to bring hoodies and long sleeve shirts and everything you guys want. So, all right. I'm glad the fact that some of you guys are laughing about the fart machine and some of the stuff that we do. So, um, all right, let's hear. Lee Cotton, a partner should be someone that you can trust with your life, wife, dog, 365 days of the year. Take them fishing or turkey hunting and test them for good morals and ethics. Bingo. I like you. I like this. You guys, applications. So I take a week off. Okay, so Scott, you two must be talking. Uh, your wife doesn't let you go enough. Look me up. Perfect. So some of you guys are really starting to... Uh, communicate. This is awesome. So Scott, the best way to be good at teaching is to honestly have the other person's best interest in mind. I'm still hoping to get my best hunting partner, fill his tag, and he knows that. That's the thing, putting their success. So, um, and also not doing it with the expectation of getting something back. So, uh, Freddie, I will be a student soon once I get past February. Outstanding. Okay. Game changer eligible. Yes. So, which level gets me your hunting spot GPS coordinates? Well, that's one of the things. So, um, you know, like I said, with, within this, I want to dive in a little bit deeper Um than what I can do here, guys, because I know some of the information that I've given here, you guys have asked me to dive deeper, but unfortunately, because of the students that are doing, um, you know, the private lessons and in and, and paying for that information, I have to kind of be, kind of honor them a little bit, so. Okay, great episode tonight. Uh, you would fit right in. We're always cracking on someone in camp and no one is safe. So, okay. So one more, one more funny story. So we were, we were hunting a state, uh, an area that none of us had, had hunted in. And, and this is when I was part of, of Rocky's crew. And so basically you had three or four of us from um, you know, Rocky Mountain hunting calls, bugling bull game calls. Jim Horn uh, was hunting with us that year, and so was uh, Gary Broadhead from Hoyt. Well, some locals had found our camp, and, and so they had been coming in, you know, every day and, you know, saying, hey, you know, we know where to take you, you know, let us take you. And, and we were kind of reluctant at first, and, and finally we said, okay, we'll go. So three of us met this individual and, and he took us to the spot and, and we get there in the dark and he goes, man, it's great. Cause you know, here's this, here's this face that all we have to do is go about halfway up on that. And, and we always get into elk every time. Well, this is new territory for us. We like to explore. We like to cover ground and see what's over the next ridge. So starts cracking first light. We start going up that face we continue to climb up that face and this individual is like oh man we've we've never had to go this high on the face before well then we get up to the top of the ridge and we start working the ridge back well then the ridge wise and we've got bulls bugling we're in bulls all morning we're working them and working them and i mean we've covered quite a bit of ground at this point and the elk have gone to bed so we decide to break and eat some lunch and you know, this individual didn't bring anything with them because they weren't really anticipating, you know, something. So we shared with them, but then it's nap time. You know, the elk have gone to bed, we've eaten, we're going to take a nap. 
And I lay down and then all of a sudden just this laughter breaks out. And one of the individuals has this laugh that is so contagious because you can't tell if they're laughing or choking or, you know, if you should administer CPR to save their life. And, you know, we're all looking at him like, what is your problem? And he goes, God, I started falling asleep and I was on my side and he came up behind me and just started spooning me. And, and just, I mean, this is mountainside, just having fun horseplay. But yeah, out of all seriousness, the, uh, this other individual just rolled over and spooned and this other individual didn't know how to take it. Well, he started laughing, which gave him the laughing farts, which made somebody else laugh even harder they kind of peed themselves a little bit. And I'm just looking around going, dear God, we're out here hunting. You're crapping all over yourself. You know, you're peeing all over yourself. Yeah, we're, we're serious hunters back here. And I'm sure this local, that this is the first time that they have ever been with the three of us. And here we are six, seven, eight miles back in. I'm sure this individual is just starting to hear banjos and he's thinking about running the rapids and canoes and just could only imagine what's going through his mind. But that's the type of thing that you get the right partners. It just adds so much more fun out there and makes the hunt so much more enjoyable. So, all right, guys. We are there. We are at the end of the hour. Thank you, everyone, that uh, included tonight. Um, I'm going to go back through and make sure I didn't miss any questions. So if you guys do have questions or another topic that you know you want us to cover next week, let us know. I'll give a few minutes for a few more questions. So, okay. So, again, Friday night's video is going to be the head-to-head -head bow battle between the Hoyt RX-3 Ultra and the Matthews Traverse. Uh, bendable products, 50% off their 2018 pouches and expresses. Kong Valley Collective giveaway, Good Bull Outdoors giveaway. Uh, I will have shirts and hats in Portland and Salt Lake. And for those of you that want to dive in deeper and more information, there is the Patreon page. Like I said, I will put up links. I just built it, so... There's not a ton of information that gets unlocked once you become a patron, um, but definitely going to add to that. One of the other things that I am going to do for the herd bull level is that herd bull level, I'm thinking about doing a, um, a live Q&A just with the herd bull every couple of weeks to really dive deeper into calling strategies and techniques and this and that. So, uh, Paul, I just cackled outside my headphones, laughing farts. Hey, I mean, it's, it, it happens. Okay. It, it definitely happens. So, all right. Thank you to all of you tuning in. I mean, your support, I, I really, really appreciate it. I'm excited to see the growth for 2019 as always. Keep calling, keep practicing, but most importantly, guys, have fun while you're doing it. Have a great week, and we will see all of you next week on the next episode of Wapiti Wednesday Live Q&A brought to you by Elk Calling Academy. Have a great week, everybody.